The Kramer phenomenon highlights a, an important myth in asset pricing theory that I go over in my book, Finding Alpha, and highlights a, a nuance of, of risk that I think is very important. If you measure risk in standard asset pricing theory on the horizontal axis and return on the vertical axis, you should get a linear positive relationship. That's what any risk model says. Expect return is going to be equal to some constant, some zero beta risk free port asset return. And it's going to be added by this uh, risk loading, uh, a beta, and then the price of that risk loading, which in the cap M is simply the equity premium. And it should go up linearly in risk if you measure risk correctly. And so this is the cap M, this is the security market line. That's theory. In practice, nobody ever recommends a stock that has lower than average returns and just because it has much lower than average risk. That is, firms, they, they exist on this spectrum in, in, in equity markets. You, you have high risk, high return stocks, and then supposedly you have low risk, low return stocks because you know the average is here. So obviously the ones that have higher than average expected returns should have higher than average risk. However, you never get internet spam saying uh, anything but higher than average returns. The returns are always above 10%. They're always often above 20%. So they're, they're extremely high, much higher than anyone's estimate of an, an equity return. So they're above average. But in equilibrium, there are just as many of uh, these low returning stocks. So why doesn't anybody ever say, you know, you should buy this stock here because it, it has lower than average return, but it has an even much lower risk. No one ever says that. Um, so all these lower than average returning stocks are like Ugly Betty. Nobody cares. They're wallflowers. Boring. And all the, the higher than average return stocks are really sexy and everybody wants those. So this assumption is, is contrary to what we see in practice and it's one of the many other dimensions in which traditional asset pricing theory fails. Uh, and of course I go over more of these in my book, Finding Alpha, or you can check out my videos. Thanks.